So these are notes. I apologize about my voice. Um, sounds a little raspy, but that's okay. We'll get it done. Uh, talking about point slope form and um, some story problems. So point slope form is this. Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. With this one, I remember when we do slope intercept form, Y is equal to M X plus B, and standard form is AX plus B Y is equal to C. All those have that Y and X, X and Y that don't change, those always are there. That's this Y and this X. So some people, when they plug numbers in, they plug them in the wrong spots. That X and Y that I just circled, you do not ever plug numbers in for those. Those are always going to be there, just like these other two we've already done. Plugging things into Y, X, and this M is still your slope, just like it was in slope intercept form. So again, not a to label your X1 and Y1. We need a point slope form. So we have y minus y1 is 4 is equal to your slope is 2 over 3 times x minus um, x is negative. Now, the only thing I would ask you to do once you've got uh, another plug number in is to simplify. You want to simplify what I really mean. If you ever have minus a negative, make sure you put that in the form. So the best answer for this one x. X plus two. Thing, just putting in point slope form where they give you a point, they give you a slope. This shouldn't be anything crazy. I think you did this in algebra one, but even if you didn't, um, it shouldn't be rocket surgery. Every time you put your X value in your X1, your Y value, you put your Y1, your slope always goes where your M is. The only tricky thing is, again, making sure you remember if you have the minus and negative. And uh, so I only did one of those, but you'll realize that we're going to do, I mean, we're going to, almost every problem, we're going to start by plugging numbers in like that. So if you're not quite there yet, um, we'll get a lot of practice, especially if you do the worksheet like you're supposed to. Difference with this one, um, but they don't give you the slope and a point, they give you two points. So um, the first thing we have to do is we have to find our slope because they don't give us that. Um, in your slope, you're using that formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is my x1, my y1. This is my x2 and y2. Again, you can interchange those a little bit, um, but it's just easier for me. Just go ahead and do it in the same order they give it to you. Um, I think that makes things make a little bit more sense. Minus 6, minus 4. Out of that, I need to use the calculator from here. Negative six plus so three and a minus. Now, again, a lot of people are this one. It's not a bad idea, especially if you're just checking your work. Positive, I'm sorry, negative over negative. So that is positive three over five. So this is the slope. So now it's almost like the last one they gave us, except for the last one they gave us, they gave us the slope. Number one, they gave you the slope in one point. Now they give you two points. So we found the slope. So we use that slope, and then it doesn't actually matter which point you use. I always use the first one, and the main reason I do that is because that X1 and Y1 we just labeled, I'm saying X1 and Y1 go towards all the way over here. So that's why I use that first one. Um, you don't necessarily have to. First one, I have y minus, my y value is negative 3, is equal to my slope times x minus, my x value is 4, uh, and again, we have minus a negative, so minus a negative is plus, so y plus 3 is equal to 3 over 5 times x minus 4, so that is the answer I would put. However, remember, you can still use this other point as well, so we have y minus negative 6 is equal to 3 over 5 times x minus negative 1. Both of those, minus the negative, end up being plus. So this is also an answer. Now I will point out, the time now to do this, um, the most common mistake is that people don't put their y value here. 
they accidentally put the y value over here they kind of do an order they think since this one's first they put it first in their equation and this one's second so they put a second in their equation that's not right so make sure you're being careful um, where you put your x and your y So go ahead and do these on your own. Um, now again, if I were you guys, I would pause the video right here and do these on your own and then hit play so you can watch these. Um, this is one of those things that again, if you get practice with it, it's not too bad. But if you're just going to copy down what I'm doing the whole time, um, you're not going to get as good at it. So I highly recommend hit pause, go ahead and do these on your own. Um, Bulb, we have to find the uh, slope, or the, yeah, the slope first, y1, x1, x2, y2, theta prime minus over 2 minus negative 2, um, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6, uh, and again, 2 minus negative 2, a lot of people put 0, but it actually is 4, so use a calculator, but you don't even have to do minus or negative, uh, or negative. Minus negative and positive like that. You just put two minus negative two in the calculator, and we need the right answer. And so once you have that, make sure you so that is negative. That's your slope. First equation, so that's y minus one is equal to three over two times x minus negative two. And again, minus negative, we need to make sure that is a plus. Again, you don't have to have both of them, so I guess I would very much recommend only have one, one of them, but just in case you want to see it, um, you could also use this other equation or this other point as well. Um, so y minus negative 5 is equal to negative 3 over 2 times x minus 2. And minus negative, we have y plus 5 is equal to negative 3 over 2 times x minus 2. Now the other thing I should have mentioned before, but one of the other very obvious mistakes that a lot of students make is when they plug in a positive 1, they think this is plus 1, and when they plug in a negative 2, they think it's going to be a minus 2, so just be careful with that because you're subtracting all those. So when you plug it in, you have to make sure you keep track of that. So hopefully those aren't too bad, just plugging those in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go from point slope form to slope intercept. So there's actually two ways to do this, um, and it all depends on how good you are to calculator and how you want to do it. So the first thing I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you much of this, um, but you could literally just do this like before, where we took, because um, we did this before when we'd have something like y minus 3 is equal to 4 times x plus 2. And before, we'd just take that 4 and distribute. Well, now we have this fraction, so it gets a little bit more difficult, but the good news is you could do it the same way. Take negative 2 over 3 and distribute. And then y minus 8 is equal to negative 2 over 3x. Um, the only thing is you'd have to take a fraction multiplied by 9, but that's fine. You can type that in your calculator. 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3 times 9 is x. And then you would add 8 to both. So you could do it that way. That's fine. And if you want to, you can stick to it. The way I'm going to do it, I want to do it this way. And again, it's code for when we did theaters. And again, I think fractions are nice on your calculator, but they take a little bit of time to punch in there. So first thing is I have a negative, I make it a positive, and put that my negative with the numerator. And then the denominator at the bottom, you distribute to your left. The top, you distribute to your right. So three times one. Then the numerator negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. I like it that way, now I will be honest, the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they will take, and just, uh, they'll 
I'll take the three and the two and go to the left. The denominator always goes to the left. Why we can do this, but I don't really want to get it, and I don't think it would help you. I think it would confuse you more than it would help. So from here, now we can solve this because we want it to do, oh, we want it in both, slope intercept form and standard form. Um, so I didn't realize that. Do this the first bit, I guess we'll do this form, but we have already done that where you go from one to another, so it should be good. Um, the next thing I do, and this doesn't actually matter, but I'm going to add 20. Because now you do that step, you could do that step in whichever one you're going to do, whether it's slope intercept form or standard form, that step will help on both of them. So negative 18 plus 24 is 6. So from here to put it in slope intercept form, everything by 3. Slope intercept form. When y is equal to negative two over x plus three. We could go from that one, and now we're backwards to go with this standard form, like we did before when we started with slope intercept. But I'm going to start back with this step, where everything is listed out for you. So for this one, to put this in standard form, we have three y is equal to negative two x plus six. All I have to do is add two x. Some of them require a little bit more work, but not a lot, because we'll have two x plus three y is equal to six. So slope intercept form, standard form, point slope form. They all have their times that they're preferred to use over the other ones, um, but we obviously are most familiar with slope intercept form. So we're going to do some this. Uh, thing with number six. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could just take three fourths and you could distribute. Um, once you do that, then you can do the slope intercept form and standard form from there. First, um, and actually, especially since you're form where you're not, you can't have fractions anyway. I think it's easier to get rid of that fraction right away. Um, by doing what we just talked about. Take the denominator to the left, 4y minus 12, and the numerator to the right, 3x minus 24. Um, now again, I'm going to add this 12 first. You don't have to do it. Honestly, if I was putting in slope intercept form, I would probably move the 3 first, but it doesn't make any difference. Negative 24 plus 12 is negative 12. Then from here, divide everything by 4 for slope intercept form. Y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 3. And we come back to this step and subtract that 3x from both sides. This is probably where I should rewrite it like I did the last one to make it not as sloppy, but that's okay. So we have negative 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 12. Remember, though, we can't have a negative for standard form, so we have to multiply the whole thing by negative 1, which means we have positive 3x minus 4y is equal to positive 12. So go ahead and do this one on your first. So you can do it on your own just to get that practice. Make sure you know how to do it. Again, I know a lot of times when you watch me do it, it always makes sense and you understand why I'm doing it. It's very logical. But when you have to do it on your own and you don't have that safety net, you're not just following along, sometimes it gets a little bit more difficult. Okay, I'm positive. Move my number uh, by negative Distribute that to the left. So I have 4y minus 4 times 13 is 52. Plus 32, I believe. Yeah. A little bit more space, so for small cut form. Plus 
eight. Four, standard four. X plus ten. Y equal to two. Four divided by four. We get one is equal to negative five over four X plus eight. Paying attention to the next one. So, now let's go back. Five X. We already have done this slope in this left So, S plus 4Y is equal to 32. Now, one quick way to check for slope intercept form is was negative 5 over 4, so that's got to match the slope in our slope intercept form, which also you could find with this one, that negative A over B, if you want to double check that as well. So moving on, write this equation in slope intercept form. Oh, sorry, before I start this, I will say most of the time on a test or a quiz, I'm not going to ask you to do both slope intercept form and standard form. It'll be one or the other. Um, so if that's what's confusing you, that it's all kind of bogged down, you can do one or the other is fine. Um, the next one, I have the equation of a line in slope intercept form given the following information. Um, so there's two ways to do this, where you go from a slope through a point or uh, down here. So kind of like what we started with, they might give you the slope or they might give you the information that you have to find the slope. So there are two ways to do this. I'm going to do I like first. Depends. Some people think one way is easier. Some people think the other way is easier. We start off with point slope form. So y minus negative 9 is equal to negative 4 over 7 times x minus 14. So once we have this set up, once we have this set up, now we do it just like we were doing. That's 7 gets Distributed to the left, 7y plus 63 to the right, 4x plus 56. Four, so I'll subtract the 73. Equal to negative 4x. Um, 56 minus 63 is negative 7. That's the first one. That's the, that's the way I like to do it. Now, the other way to do it, and this is one that's more common with teachers, uh, I don't know teachers that don't teach point slope form at all. Um, so they don't use point slope form at all, and they use slope intercept form. Now, the key with this one is it might be a little bit quicker, but I think it's harder to wrap your mind around, and I think there's more little places to make mistakes. Um, and the first thing I will say when I do this is that you actually do the slope intercept form twice if you do it. So the first time you're doing it, this is your x you'd be set. This is the slope. If we do the y intercept, we'd be good. So one thing I tell students, somewhere off to the side, write down negative 4 over 7x blank. That's where your y intercept is going to go. Once we have that, we're golden. And that helps a lot of students if you put that first. We plug this in. Um, where we have again now we the y is equal to my slope is negative four over seven times my x is fourteen plus b. I don't like it is because now we have to um, cancel this out. Now the good news is most of the ones we do will cancel nicely, so that's why a lot of teachers do use this. Um, but I still prefer this method. So the 7 to 14 canceled, just like we did before. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So now we have negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus b. So then add 8 to both sides. Plus 8 is negative 1. That is your b, which is your y intercept. So now we just put that in for our y intercept, minus 1. Now the reason we use this twice once where we plug in the x and the y and our slope. And then the second time you use it is when you plug this in, and that's one of the other things that confuses people. A lot of students can't understand why one time we plug in this X and Y, 
but then the other time for your answer, we don't. So that's why I think that's a little bit confusing, but if you like that method, when you saw that, if you thought, man, I like that way better, um, let me know. I can do more examples of that, or I can sit down with you and we can do some more. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with that first method. So again, 7 minus 15 over 5 minus 15. 7 minus 15 is negative 8, or negative 10, which is positive 4 fifths. Uh, which order pair you use, especially since we're getting it in slope intercept form, either way you use it, you're going to get the same answer. I'd be tempted to do them both. So, so y minus 15 is equal to 4 over 5 times x minus 15. To the left, minus 5 times 15 is 75. Read my 4 to the right. 4x minus 60, 75. y is equal to 4x plus 75 by 5. 2, 4 over 5x plus 75 divided by 5. I should know this, but that's a big 15. So that is your answer for this one. Now, again, even if you would have used the 7 to the 5, maybe you would have used that because that's smaller than 15, so maybe it would have been easier. Either way you do it, it should work out in the end. Uh, and again, one really quick way to check it work, not necessarily saying you got it right or not, but make sure this slope that we have matches the slope that we got over here, which matches the slope in our answer. Do these on your own, pause, do them on your own, and then click so you can see your answer. Three over. Four, six, which is. Negative three is equal to two over three times x minus negative two. Plus. And that was that. Uh, so we take the denominator plus nine times three y plus nine is equal to two x plus four. And again, now we're just solving for y. Four minus nine is negative five. Three. Y is equal to three. Three, is that right? All right. We got a fraction for our y-intercept, so uh, wrong, but I can't tell. Like I did. Let me check real quick. Oh, looks good. This there's still I could make a mistake. You guys know me well enough for that, but it doesn't look like there's a mistake. And this is the exact example. I wonder if I put this one on here because doing this one, that second way that I put over here, is kind of a nightmare because this one's nice that the fraction cancels out really nicely. Um, but if you end up with a y-intercept that's a fraction, that doesn't cancel out very well. So that's one of the reasons I do like this. Um, now, just like I said, normally we don't get a fraction, and so I would check my work if I were you, but I'm not asking you to graph it, so if you do get a fraction, it's not like it's any harder than what we did before. We didn't even have a fraction until this very last step. Um, so it might happen, but if it does happen, I would check your work, but I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't assume you got the wrong answer or any of that. Um, for this one, we have y... Minus 5 is equal to negative 2 times x minus negative 1. It's plus fraction with our slope, so we just distribute that. There is no, I mean, if you want to put a denominator of 1, you can. It's just that when you distribute 1, it doesn't do much. Negative 2x minus 2, and now we add 5. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. All right, moving on to the story problems. Now, the story problems, I didn't exactly know where I should put these in. Um, 
and I thought now is as good a time as any. I might switch that for next year. We'll just have to see. Um, but it's really not any different than what we did before. Um, the only difference is it's going to be equal to. So what we did before, I should say, is we did a profit and said like, well, you spent thirty-six dollars total at the fair, and it cost you ten dollars to get in, and tickets were three dollars for every ride. So this is what our equation looked like. The only difference today is that when we get that equation. I'm going to have, instead of that 36, what I told you I paid total, I'm going to put the C as the total cost. That's the only difference. My cell phone bill costs 10 cents per minute plus a $20 fee. And then I say M is minutes, C is cost. We're going to set up an equation. Um, and I said, it's, it is very similar to slope intercept form, except for instead of X and Y, we used M and C. So the cost of your cell phone bill is however many minutes plus that $20 fee. Now again, if you see this word per or each or every, you know that's the number that gets multiplied by your variables. So that depends on how many minutes you've talked and then it's a $20 fee. Now again, the other way to remember it is that $20 fee doesn't matter if you talk for one minute or 20 minutes or 100 minutes or whatever, that's still going to be $20. This part of your cost is going to change. If you only talk for one minute, it's way cheaper than if you talk for three hours. But that's all they're asking for that one. Same thing in this next one. The car rental charges fifty dollars to rent the car plus seventy dollars, seven dollars, sorry, per mile. Again, we have that per. And again, if they were use the word each or every, that's also a tip off. Again, we have M is the mile and C is the cost. I didn't realize I used the same variable. So that's okay. The total. Fifty dollars plus seven dollars per month. Um, again, you could have obviously made it seven M plus fifty. Doesn't make any difference. Sorry, I guess that was a UDU problem. So, if you have any questions, make sure you're asking. Um, that, um, I guess, yeah, email me if you have any questions. We'll start on the next section uh, tomorrow. I will say that's a good one. Um, the next section very much relies on this, uh, these notes a lot. We will use these notes, these point slope form, getting point slope form into slope intercept form. We'll use that a lot in the next lesson. Thank you. Have a good day.